Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Today, we're putting the Clockworks Fairy on this 09 Dyna. Kinda, like this, but different. Danny, take it. Hey guys, this is Noah and Danny from Clockworks. Today, Danny's gonna show you how to put the new FXRP Fairy on this 09 Dyna. Biggest thing you want to do is take everything out of your box when you get it, lay it out on the table, make sure you have all the proper parts that you need to put the bike together. Uh, we're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to put some different risers on this so that we get the proper clearance of the fairing and windshield. Uh, we don't have to put a fender cover on because the fender's not there. If your fender's on, obviously you want to protect your paint. So cover that up with a towel or a fender cover, put a tank cover or towel down on your bike, make sure you protect everything you got going on. We got everything on the table over here. This is everything that's going to come in your box. So you're going to get the new fairing, neck brackets, all the hardware, all the bezels, headlight cover, and your new Clockworks flare windshield. Uh, biggest thing you want to do, and we recommend no matter if it's our fairings, fenders, whatever it is, make sure you fit it before you go to paint. We have an instruction sheet that will come with it. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to call us. I'll be one of the guys on the phone. But I'm going to turn this over to Danny, and she's going to run you through the proper installation of the new Clockworks FXRP fairing. I'll start with taking the battery box off and disconnecting the negative cable. It's a good practice to get into when you're doing anything electrical, just in case anything touches a frame that's, you know, a hot wire and whatnot. Next step, you want to remove the gas tank. For some reason, all the bolts feel longer. I swear to God, they do. <laughs> Just to get off. So be these three clips under here. Uh, you might have to use a little screwdriver, or if you have any kind of nails, you can kind of pick them out. We already had this off, so we didn't re-zip tie them. But from the fact that if you haven't had your gas tank off, it does get zip tied to this little clip right there. So you're gonna want to snip that before you start unclipping. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the gas tank and where these clamps are on the bottom. If you were just to take this bolt out and it drops down on the top of the rocker box, uh, you're scratching up there. So you're gonna wanna put a rag or some type of cloth or foam or something in there so that doesn't happen. Now I just do it right around the thing. All right, so just a heads up, it is gonna leak a bit of fuel out of here. So make sure you have a rag to catch it and a vacuum cap to cap off this side. Or drain your gas tank. Or drain your gas tank, but um, it's a little bit harder on the fuel injected ones to do. You can't just open up the pet cock on it. So it's your choice on whatever you'd like to do. Just like that. We've already got this disconnected, but to disconnect this, you're just gonna push up on this little collar. You know, let it loose. Before you go ahead and disconnect that last bolt, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you disconnect your fuel gauge. Um, it comes up here and um, clips underneath there. So if you go to pull it off and you're stuck and you're just by yourself and your buddy's not there or whatnot, um, you won't end up in a hard situation. Sorry, disconnected, because we had a part. I personally like to zip tie this up in a way, just so when you pull the tank off, it's not gonna possibly scratch this part of your fuel tank. It's almost full. The stock, it has turn signals that hang from the controls, and the wire's gonna go down and through here, 
and through the neck of the frame. So you're gonna wanna disconnect that. And in order to do that, there's this plastic cover you have to take out. There's two tabs, one on each side of the frame. And then this will pull out. Sometimes easier than others. And you'll just pull it down and, and out of there. And this is where you can get to your headlight um, wiring as well. Um, obviously we're gonna be taking that off and the turn signals will be there as well. Um, something else I like to do because we are going to be putting our bracket that holds up the fairing on here. Um, there's a possibility you could scratch this frame, so I like to blue duct tape or blue painter tape it just to make sure that we're not going to scratch it or anything. Flying a little bit vertically challenged, so we're gonna keep it at this height, but obviously you can go up if you do have a lift. If not, it's doable on the ground. At this point, you can set that zip tie to put out of the way for the fuel tank. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get all your wiring routed properly. So far, you're doing better than Ryan. We would've had more hiccups by now. Well, the words, like that's why I like when Ryan's here, because he can, he loves to talk and he can do all that part. But this is awesome. Right, and like I said, your turn signals are going to be up and routed through here, so you can go ahead and take them out through here. There's a rubber boot on both sides of the frame, so whichever way yours are routed, you're going to want to take this out. It's a little half, little moon looking thing, and you pull it out. Next up, we're going to go ahead and put this bracket on, putting the collar side up. Now, I personally am going to go ahead and run this bolt towards the back. One, it's a little bit better to see it uh, visual, uh, visually and uh, other just so road debris and grime doesn't end up getting on the threads of that just in case you ever have to take it off you're not fighting it you're going to go ahead and just make sure you leave everything loose you don't want to tighten it until we got it all bu buttoned up Not sponsored. I'm not gonna show what kind they are. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. The Fuzzy Wuzzy was a Fuzzy Wuzzy. Or was he? He was. He was. <laughs> so you're gonna have to take taking these rubber grommets out in order to take out your headlight wiring and your turn signal wiring. Um, in order to get that back in, something I found to be a lot easier is if you were to spray shine marks on them, they kind of slide right in. Kind of, it's a little bit tricky still. You're not putting this old struggle bus in there, are you? A hundred percent. Done. It takes a lot longer if you didn't spray it, I promise you. So, shine works. Next up, we're gonna put this neck bracket on and you're gonna make sure that you route all this wiring on the inside if possible. Um, sometimes if you have some different bars already on there and your looms are a little bit bigger, it'll kind of be hard to do that. So uh, just make sure that it's not gonna be rubbing or chafing when you start riding, riding your bike, otherwise it's gonna wear through the wires and whatnot. All right, while you get that bracket lined up, you're not gonna to wanna to scratch your lower triple, so I'd put a piece of tape on that as well. Like I said earlier, you're going to want to make sure that you're not pinching any of these wires when we put this back. So for now, we're just going to mock it up without the gas tank on it, just to see where we got to move stuff. At this point, you can go ahead and 
and angle your blue tape out of there before you tighten it down and get stuck. It's not as much of a tight fit on that one, so I'll it out. You don't want to just shove all this wiring back in there, but after we get our headlight hooked up and whatnot, at least have the wires ran for it. We're going to go ahead and put all this back in there and put the cover back on before we put the fuel tank on. Probably should have ran this first. Why? Because... Run it from this way. Well, it's got to go through here. That's what I was saying. Oh, that would have been smart to run first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll run the other side. We got more room. Not much, but. You know, <laughs> if you just take your headlight bulb out of your housing and snip the end of it off, you'd never have to even mess with that wire. Yes. Correct. Tag tip. And it should hopefully be, I said hopefully, it should hopefully be long enough to where you don't have to extend these wires. You just put new ends on them or you could um, solder in the pigtail. It's your choice on that one. There you go. You wanna make sure you have enough slack in it to where it's not gonna pull on these wires with vibration and stuff and possibly Cause it not to work later down the road. Now we're gonna put this cover on. <laughs> in order to do it, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get it in here first. And then you kind of pull down and put that tab in there. And then the middle side right in place. You wanna make sure that these tabs pop out the side of the frame. There's one on each side. Uh, otherwise it will fall down over time. So again, we're gonna go ahead and zip tie this way so we don't end up scratching the gas tank with all these wires on the way. I am short, so I'm gonna have to put the lift back down. Hey, Noah, how's it going? Hey, everybody, just <laughs> checking back in. Yeah. Danny, you having fun yet? I'm having fun. Danny loves being on camera, loves talking <laughs> on camera and to people in general. My favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put this rack here now. We're gonna put the gas tank on. In order to do so, you're gonna have to take out this bolt. Just in case it tips forward, it doesn't end up hitting this lower triple. You wanna grab that? Boop. So, this is a friendly, nice thing to do for your mechanic. If you are bringing it to your shop, go ahead and make sure you don't have a full tank of gas. You know, like struggle bus turn face turning red and he's like taking pictures. Yeah. That's why I'm behind the camera so people don't do it to me. That's not the right thing to do. Why don't you use these ones? Because you have the same way in there. We're gonna use these ones. Uh, and then you're gonna grab bag F. They all are labeled with letters, so you can go ahead and so that is work. bag F. So you can work your way down the elevator. F is for... <laughs> F is for neck to frame. So it's going to be this mount where it mounts to the frame. Uh, the top one's going to be where the fuel tank is. Um, I personally like to go from the right side to the left. So when it's on the kickstand, you'll see the nut side. So much pressure. So you're not going to put us taking this out now, huh? Nope. I'm going to cut to you putting it in. Just sliding it in. That's a great photo. I haven't taken any. Now that's a good one. That's a great photo. You have to be like, and pose. Picture. <laughs> like, you couldn't give me a heads up, you start snapping. Yeah. You're gonna wanna make sure before you get gas on yourself, pulling this, 
Make sure your clamps are already on there. And then Sometimes you get lucky and don't make much of a mess. Sometimes not so much. You got bag D, and that's gonna be your fair and the neck. What are you doing? Put a fairing on. Oh, ah, that's cool. <clears throat> I said that there is some wiggle room. So yeah, you, you want to leave it loosey goosey so you got a little wiggle wiggle. Is there an instruction? Do I have to say it like that? I mean, you can say it however yeah, you want to say it. I already said to leave it loose. Using hardware bag D, install fairing and fairing mount adapter to the deck bracket. Position the fairing mount adapter so the notch is at six o'clock position, the bottom which I called out, snug bolts down, still allowing for side-to-side -side adjustments. Right next, we're gonna install, what do we call it? The lower, oh. lower support bar. Bar or bracket? I think it says bar. bar. I use bracket. I don't know. Speed bar. <laughs> Watch if you right. it. It's a little bit of a finagling to get this in there. Not too bad. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put these bolts up from the bottom just so you don't see them hanging down. <laughs> Make sure you do put a washer on both sides. You don't want it to crack the fiberglass. Action. Hmm? Action. The party is arrived. All right, so back C is gonna be our hardware to mount the headlight ring, the headlight ring mount. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure that this clips on the top part and that screws on the bottom. That's, That's why, why we use a fender cover. Oh, <laughs> tighten these down. Uh, you don't want to just go ahead and tighten one of them at a time. Maybe just bring them all to the surface because if you do one, it's going to put a lot of stress on the one side or the other. Let's bring them all down snug and then go around and do final torque. Typically you're going to want to do this wiring um, prior to putting this on. It'll be easier to get to it as far as doing the ends, but we will be coming off with this in order to get it painted. So for now, we're just going to mock it up like this. What bag did those come out of? These came out of bag B. You missed one. Well, for that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bolt through the middle of this one and just get it started so I can line it up without having to hold it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to want to go ahead and get all the screws started um, before you tighten them down so that they all line up. All right, you're going to want to go ahead and start in the middle and work your way out on these. All right. Now that we got that put on there, we're gonna go ahead and put this front headlight cover on just to make sure that the headlight cover mounts up properly and then we're going to tear it down for paint. Push and twist. 
freshman through... Actually, you're going to take your headlight cover and you're going to put this trim around it. There is a separation where this ring actually comes together. I'm not sure if you can see it in there. Um, that is going to go on the bottom of this cover and that's going to be where these two notches come together. Uh, they are a little finicky to get these on. Um, again, I would suggest using Shineworks uh, just to help ease getting it on there. I like to start with the seam at the bottom. But then you'll just go around and get it in there. I like to keep this little plastic on there at least till we're done. Just uh, just to protect it from getting scratched or anything. They are good photos that you would be appreciative of. And they are no laughing matter for they are instructional photos. Like you're lying. What do you mean? The way you said it's like when your girl's like, does this make me look fat? And you're like, no, no, it doesn't. It's fine. Well, because then if you say no, then you're lying. But if you say yes, then you're lying because it does. But if you say it the way you just said it, it makes it sound like you're lying. So how would you prefer I say it? We got a little off topic on that one. <laughs> That's fair. A little shine works. On the inside, you don't want any streaks on there. And typically you would have your headlight in there, but we are just uh, assembling it for paint. Um, it does not come with a headlight, so you're gonna choose your own. It's just gonna have to be a seven inch headlight. Do you? And the guy she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> I'm still pretty good. <laughs> you can put it on and then you can just pull the trim away. Drop the washer down in there, kind of. And there you go. Oh boy. Just like the windshield, we're not gonna just tighten one down and go around. We're just gonna evenly bring them to the surface and then we will snug them up afterwards. Now at this point is when you would want to take your bike off the lift or um, if you're doing it on the floor, just make sure you turn the bars all the way left, all the way to the right. Make sure that your controls aren't going to be hitting your windshield or the bearing. So these are the stock bars, stock risers that are on here now. Um, it is very close on if it's going to hit this or not, but you do want to make sure yours is not. Um, we just roll these back a little bit, but for the rider that we have, we are going to end up raising it another inch and a half, two inches. Um, we got six and a half inch risers that um, we have that we're going to put on here. From here, you're going to go ahead and put this tank piece back on, hook up your battery and your seat. You're going to have such a fun time editing, buddy. It's done. That's it. Easy as that. <laughs> Danny, what else do we got to do here? I've got some bars coming in today, so we're going to go ahead and get them put on. Um, we're also going to pull it off the lift, lock the bars left and right, snap the throttle. Make sure nothing hits, make sure the throttle doesn't stick, and then we're going to pull the fairing off and send it out to paint, and we're good to go. Perfect. We're going to send this stuff off to paint, get these bars on, and we'll be ready to rock. It's that simple. We make our parts, and we make our instructions so that anybody can put these things on. If you've been doing it for 30 years or 30 seconds, if you're new into the industry, new into motorcycles, and you want to do something to your bike, we pride ourselves in making product and instructions and having everything that guys need and girls uh, to make their bike cool, to make it custom, to make it clock. Like always, we pride ourselves in customer service. If you run into an issue, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're unclear of anything, please, by all means, give us a call at the shop here, 605-996-3700. Shoot us an email, get a hold of us. We'll be glad to help. Uh, but that's it. Stay tuned. We're finishing up this bike. We got a couple other bikes that we're finishing up. And that's it, guys. Simple as that. We got a cool bike, new fairing, new windshield. Put some bars on here and be ready to roll. Get clocked.